A data factory pipeline is analogous to an SSIS package where each pipeline is composed of activities that together perform a task. So for example, to copy the data from Azure Blob Storage to Azure SQL Database, you create a copy activity. Linked services are like connection managers that define the connection information for data stores that the data factory needs to connect. And you have data sets that identify data within different data stores such as tables, files and folder. So the linked services, data sets and activities and pipelines are defined as simple JSON documents within the data factory. But do not worry, you can use the data factory UI to generate the JSON. So instead of simple copy operation, if you would like to transform the data, for example with uSQL, Data Factory can connect to and dispatch the activity to Azure Data Lake Analytics. Remember, Data Factory is just an orchestra and it cannot perform any transformation activity by itself. Integration Runtime is the compute infrastructure used by Data Factory. There are three types of integration runtimes. Azure Integration Runtime, Self-Hosted Integration Runtime, and Azure SSIS Integration Runtime. First, let's talk about Azure and the Self-Hosted Integration Runtime. Azure Integration Runtime can copy data between cloud data stores and it can dispatch the activity to a variety of compute services such as Azure HD Insights or SQL Server where the transformation takes place. The self-hosted integration runtime is a software with essentially the same code as the Azure IR, but you install it on an on-prem machine or a virtual machine in a virtual network. A self-hosted IR can run copy activities between a public cloud data store and a data store in a private network, and it can also dispatch transformation activities against compute resources in a private network. But you might ask, why self-hosted IR? Why can't I run all my activities on the Azure IR itself? The most popular answer is that Data Factory will not be able to directly access on-prem data sources as they sit behind a firewall. It is sometimes possible to establish a direct connection between Azure and an on-prem data sources by configuring your firewall in a specific way and if you do that, you don't need to use the self-hosted IR. But this is something that admins aren't always happy to do. Let's take a scenario to understand how integration runtime works with Data Factory to orchestrate data movement. So I have a data factory pipeline with two activities. The first is a copy activity to move the data from SQL Server to Azure Data Lake Store. And the second activity processes the data with Data Lake Analytics and stores it in the Data Lake Store. So you have the on-prem environment with SQL Server sitting behind a firewall and the Data Lake Store within the Azure Cloud. When the first activity begins, the data factory directs the self-hosted IR to copy the data from SQL Server to Data Lake Store. If you are wondering where the self-hosted IR is defined, it is defined in the link services that connects to the SQL Server. So in this case, the self-hosted integration runtime performs the copy activity. Once the data is copied, the second activity begins and Data Factory sends a command to the Azure integration runtime this time, which then dispatches the activity to Data Lake Analytics to transform the data and store it in Data Lake Store. Note that your Data Factory instance and the Azure integration runtime can be in different regions. The integration runtime is usually closer to the data source. With Azure SSIS Integration Runtime, you can natively execute SSIS packages in a managed environment. So when we lift and shift the SSIS packages to Data Factory, we use Azure SSIS Integration Runtime. So first you create Azure SSIS Integration Runtime, which creates integration services catalog in Azure SQL Database for your SSIS packages to live. 
When the pipeline activity begins, Data Factory sends a command to the Azure SSIS IR, which then executes the SSIS packages. Till now, we have executed packages that dealt with public cloud data stores like the Blob Storage or Azure SQL database. But what if your package needs to pull data from an on-premise data store like the SQL Server? In that case, the existing architecture will not work and we need to make a few changes to let the Azure SSIS integration runtime talk to your SQL Server in the private on-premise network. First, the integration runtime needs to be placed in a subnet of an Azure virtual network. A subnet is nothing but a segment of a virtual network. Only the integration runtime is required to be within the virtual network. You can continue to have the SQL database outside the virtual network in the public cloud. When you join the integration runtime to a private virtual network, some of the existing communications to Data Factory and the SQL database are not possible, so the Azure batch service behind the scenes creates a load balancer and a public IP address for the load balancer so that the Data Factory service that lives outside the virtual network will be able to talk to the integration runtime. The Azure Batch service also creates a network security group which is like the firewall attached to each of the network interface cards of the individual VMs created as part of the integration runtime to open certain ports that allows the communication between the data factory service and the integration runtime and the communication between integration runtime and the SQL Azure database and blocking nearly everything else. The integration runtime is required to be joined to a virtual network so that we can connect the virtual network with the on-premise network allowing the integration runtime to access the data in SQL Server. To allow this communication to happen, you also create a virtual network gateway that sends encrypted traffic over the public internet. The gateway handles all the communication from the on-premise network and is nothing but a set of virtual machines deployed in a gateway subnet in the same virtual network. And finally, you create a point-to-site VPN or a site-to-site -site VPN or an express route connection between the two networks. We will use a point-to-site VPN to establish the connection and this is the architecture we will achieve in the next clip. Earlier, to host our SSIS DB, we created Azure SQL Database. But that's not the only option. You can also create the SSIS DB in a managed instance. So, what's the difference between these SQL Server offerings? Broadly speaking, use Azure SQL Database when you design new cloud applications that use the stable SQL Server features. Whereas, use the managed instance when you want to enable easy migration of existing on-premise SQL Server applications with minimal changes as it provides near 100% compatibility with SQL Server Database Engine, all the while preserving PaaS capabilities like automatic patching and automated backups. Also, you get increased security as you deploy it within a virtual network. So, you might ask, why bother about their differences? How it affects running my SSIS packages? With Azure SQL Database, to let integration runtime access the database server, you need to allow other Azure services to access the server. Remember, we discussed that it is not a security best practice as subscriptions of other customers will have access to it. But with managed instance, since the database is already deployed in a virtual network, to let integration runtime access the server, you just join the runtime to the virtual network. So there is absolutely no need to allow access to other Azure services if you are using a managed instance and other Azure subscriptions will not be able to access your server. However, in this course, we will stick to Azure SQL Database, but do not worry, you will learn how to use virtual network service endpoints to achieve the same level of network restriction with Azure SQL Database. But that's for the next module, so until then, give access to only the authorized users to your database.
And you can also create SSIS DB as part of an elastic pool so you can reduce cost by sharing resources across the databases. Thank you.